Yo, what's up guys? This is Afix and welcome back to the channel. Today, I will be showing you guys how to set up a dedicated server locally on your computer. And you can do this with pretty much any project, but I'm going to be creating an example one. Before you do this tutorial, you will need some things pre-installed and that will be a setup Unreal Engine source build. I'm using 4.26 and Visual Studio working with that source build. And I will also put a link in the description below on how to do both of those things. Flopperim has a bunch of good tutorials on it, so it should be no trouble. Now, once you've done that, you will need to build your engine, um, which is covered in the tutorial. So you just right click and click build. And once that is finished, you will go up, make sure development editor is selected. Win64 is also selected and click on local windows debugger. This will basically start up your engine and it'll open up your project browser where you can create a new project or open up another one. All right, so once your Unreal Engine project browser has opened up, you can go and create a new project or open one that you already have. I'm gonna go and click games. I'm going to create a new third person project. Now the main reason why we're not choosing first person is because replication is not set up well. So all other players will be invisible and that ruins the whole point of even making the dedicated server. Now we'll make this third person template project, click next, make sure it's a C++ project, this is important because if it's a blueprint project there are several extra steps you'll need to follow. Now you can select with starter content or you can do without, I'm going to do without because it's less in size. Now all the other settings are good so I'm just going to name this dedicated or dedi server yt cut, you can name this whatever you want, this is what I'm doing. And once you have finished all the setup, go and click create project. Now this code will take a while to compile, so give that a few minutes and I'll be back. Once your Visual Studio has opened up, right click on your dedicated server tut project and click build. Um, there's a weird glitch that happens when you create the project. It only opens a Visual Studio and does not build or open up your project in Unreal Engine. So if you build, you'll be able to open up your project after it's done. Now, once your build has succeeded, you can go and open up an instance of File Explorer and just find where your project is located. Once you have found that, you can go to the U project file and double click on it to open it up and it should open without any problems. Now, once your Unreal Editor has opened up, what we'll go and do is create a new map. So over here, I'm gonna go and file and create new level and uh, shortcut is Control N, that would be useful and click default. Now here we're greeted with an empty scene and we will create a material so we know that this is the server map. So what I'm going to do is actually create a blueprint actor. So I'm gonna to go to content, right click and create blueprint class actor. And I'm just gonna call this uh, BP server indicator. And if you open that up, what we're going to do is drag it over here and I'm going to add a text render. So just add that and drag it over default scene root. So it is the root component. And over here, let's just make text be a server and click enter to make that change actually occur. And for the text render color, let's just make it a bright green. Now this is looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do is go over to the actual indicator and I'm going to set it to replicate and just check replicated and we don't need to replicate movement so this is good so just click compile and save now what you can do now is drag in the server indicator and it is looking a little bit dull here let's see if I can uh, if we can change the font size here so I'm going to go to text or a scale here and for the scale I'm just gonna set it as three by three that's looking pretty good so I'm gonna compile and save that and oh it is prompting me to save the map so let's actually click s uh, control s to save over in the content create a new folder let's call this maps and open up maps and let's just call this one server map and I do uh, like to prefix my maps with a lowercase p and once that is done just click save and it will save your map now the server is a little bit high up so i'm just going to drag that down so it's really easy to see 
And I'm gonna rotate this player start so that the player it will be facing this server indicator. And I'll just move this a little bit more backwards. All right. Now, one more thing that we can do is create a simple material to indicate this. I'm not gonna be doing this, but if you really want to make it obvious that this is a server map, you can go ahead and do so. Now I'm gonna do Control Shift S to save all. And what we'll do is go over to Project Settings, Maps and Modes, and here we'll configure our maps. So for the editor startup map, it is this third person example map. Now what this is, is when you open up your editor, it is the map that is opened. Now there's also the game default map, which is the first map the players greeted up with when they open your game. Now this is generally going to be some sort of lobby. So what we're going to do is make it obvious that this is a lobby. What we'll do is just drag in or we can actually just edit this text render on the floor. So I'm going to go over to the text render and make it say lobby. And that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to do control shift S to save all. And we do want this to be our lobby. And for the transition map, this is not important for what we're doing. And the server default map is what the server opens up by default. Now I'm gonna choose this to be the P server map. And I'm gonna go over to the packaging settings. Over here, click on this arrow downwards. And I'm gonna scroll down to the maps, which will be over here, list of maps to include and click plus two times and click on these three dots and search for your maps. So that would be in maps and pserver.umap. And I'm also going to go to the content and then third person CPP maps and third person example map. Now, once that is done, we'll, we'll go over and build our project. So what we do is go over to file, go down to package project and click on Windows 64 bit and go into your D drive and create a new folder. So I'm just gonna call this packaged daddy tut. And I will select that folder and it will start packaging. Now, one thing to note is that you may have some issues while packaging and uh, especially if you have done many edits to your project. So you will need to look out for those and fix them as they come. So once your project has finished packaging, what we'll do is open up at the location where we have the source build of Unreal Engine. Double click on that, double click on engine, and then go to source, which is down here, and click on this UE4 server.target.cs and click control C to copy. Now go over to the place where you have your dedicated server tutorial project and go into the source folder and click on it and do control V to paste. Now let's rename this Deddy server yt tut server dot target dot cs and make sure that this part just matches with your project name. So once that is done, you can right click and you can open it up with either of these things. However, I'm just going to open it up with Visual Studio. So over here, we're going to have to change everything that says UE4 to our game's name. So this will be Deddy Server YT Tut. And I forgot to capitalize that. So Deddy Server YT Tut Server. And you can just copy that and paste it over here. UE4 Server Target will be Deddy Server YT Tut Server Target. And for extra modules names, you'll add your project name. Once you finished configuring this CS file for our server, what we'll do is open up the area where our project is located, right click on it and click generate Visual Studio project files. Once that is complete, what we'll do is go up and change our solution configuration to development server. So we'll go on the drop down and click development server. Now this may take a second to change. And once that is complete, we make sure that Win64 is selected as the platform and right click on your project and click build. Now this may take a while depending on your PC specs. So give it the time to build and I'll see you on the other side. Now, once your server build is complete, you'll need to open up the place where you have your project, which is right here. Open up binaries, Win64, and you'll see that there is a Deddy server YT touch server right here. This is the executable. 
So click control C to copy and then go to your packaged tutorial or your packaged project. Open up Windows Note Editor. Go over to Engine. Oh wait, no, go over to the YT Tut binaries, Win64, and a control V to paste that. And right click on your server and click on create shortcut. And here, right click and click properties. Now, all we're gonna add here is a dash log so that we see the logs for our game. Click apply and then okay. And now you can double click on your server to have it start up. And you can see that it is prompting you to allow private network access. So just click allow. You know what this is, this is you. So here, this is your server. Now you can close this out and what you can do is join from clients. So actually let's restart this server and over here, go into the Windows Note Editor folder and double click on this actual game client twice. So once those have opened up, I'm going to split screen them. So after that split screen is completed, what we'll do is click on the tilde key and to open up the console and we'll write open up and then you can auto complete by pressing tab. And once you click enter, it will open up your server map. And now when you go over to the other client, click tilde and open, you'll open your local host. And there you go. You have a running server with two clients running on that server. And you can see that this is the server map right here. And uh, if this is your first time doing this, you probably feel like an extreme sense of joy. And congratulations, you have set up a dedicated server locally. If you expose your ports, you can join the server from a completely different device, completely different Wi-Fi. And this is really what we're going to have to do if you're going to be doing a dedicated server test using GameLift. And you've basically done the hardest part. Congratulations. And if you have any questions or you want to hang out, you can join the Discord server down below. Uh, I hope this guy, uh, this helped you out a lot. And I will see you in the next video.